Okay, so is there anybody else that did not go to college <laughs> in the, out of you, the 27 of you and nobody raised their hand? Wow. And I was like, whoa, wow. built and sold eight companies in the last 15 years, which is like insane. Like, yeah. who is this girl? She didn't go to college and she gets to meet Richard Branson. She gets to start a technology company. Like, well, thank you. Thank you for taking me to my roots. <laughs> so I started a cleaning company, $300. I think I had like $300 left on one credit card I could charge to buy vacuum cleaners and stuff. Yeah, you can skip college. It doesn't have to be this linear like go to college get your grades da, 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 da. you can do a different path but sometimes that other path is gonna be harder yeah. but more fulfilling right because like, I will never ever forget that hi guys welcome back to another episode of badass digital nomads here on digital nomad TV I'm Kristen from traveling with Kristen and I'm here with Christine McDaniel of kindred.io correct kindred.io yes. yep and we're hanging out in amsterdam we just went to breakfast and you know ate a lot as you do <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bread and pancakes and cheese as you do when you're in amsterdam and christine and i have been friends now for almost a year mm -hmm. we actually met we were both speaking at the nomad summit in las vegas last year and we've been friends ever since. And you meet people somewhere and then you just become friends overnight, basically. And then you see each other in other countries. No, and that's probably my favorite part is it's like we literally met at brunch today and we picked up exactly where we left off. Yes. Like, I love that. Like, yeah. no time has gone by. That's what it felt like. Oh, and we're like halfway around the world. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I just saw you yesterday. <laughs> I know, that's what it feels like, right? Oh, it's awesome. Definitely. So, oh yeah, Gotha's gonna be, this is a, we have a kitty cat that's going to be in the interview. The resident cat. <laughs> so cute. So Christine um, was talking about at Nomad Summit, she was talking about um, Kindred, Kindred Quarters, which is her co-living space in California. And I was there talking about how to sustain the digital nomad lifestyle. But I've written quite a few articles on co-working and co-living. So we immediately hit it off. And she's here in Amsterdam at a incubator with Techstars. And she's gonna be here for three months in this accelerator launching her company, Kindred, which is a software uh, for co-living spaces. And it's also a portal and basically a hub for in a social network for information on co-living spaces all over the world. So she's gonna talk to us a little bit about that and also about her life. And it's just so, um, it's such a coincidence. It's like it's such a charmed life because I've been in Amsterdam, it's, one of my favorite cities in the world and I've been here so many times and I just recently made a co-working <laughs> video on Amsterdam and wrote an article about why Amsterdam and the Netherlands is such a great place for startups and here you are. <laughs> yes, which I'm so, you know, and it's so funny and I was telling Kristen this at brunch is that all my friends, you know, I'm in Los Angeles is an amazing city also and, you know, my friends from around the world just kept saying, you know, Christine, you're going to love Amsterdam. It's it's our, my favorite city in the world. I heard that from so many people, but Amsterdam was never on my radar. And then, yeah, I watched your fun video about like the top 10 things you must know about Amsterdam and then that started getting me excited. Yay. You know, that was right before I came out. <laughs> Because um, we found out in, on December 18th that we were going to be into this accelerator and we were thrilled and I was like, oh my gosh, I get to live in Europe for three months. This is amazing. And um, yeah, so watched your video, got me more excited, but again, had no idea. Um, and because you, you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. Like you're just like, well, am I going to like it? Am I not? Of course, the weather, I mean, it is beautiful today. So Perfect. this is out. awesome. We've had really <laughs> great weather and today, especially nice. So that's why we're, we're outside on the patio on a Sunday. Um, so yeah, no, just, I mean, after I have a confession, like after the first week in Amsterdam, I was already researching how to extend my visa. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, I was like, how can I stay here more Longer. than 90 days? Like, I don't want to leave. I love it. So it's been one month so far. We have two months left but yeah yes and we're gonna go on a bit of an adventure after this video yes. but as being good digital nomads we're working hard and we're playing hard and we're balancing our work-life balance by eating pancakes with filming videos and then on a Sunday <laughs> we're fitting it all on, on a Sunday. Sunday I'm like as long as it's a Sunday we can do whatever you want yeah you don't have the traditional background maybe compared to the other people in your accelerator so tell us kind of about um, what you were doing and how this whole entrepreneurial entrepreneurial journey started because you've done a lot in a really short period of time yeah for as far as the software that we've built more or, or less even or my from background like, um 
from how you started like after um, from high school like what was your career trajectory oh, yes. and how did you start your first company and then how did that lead to today because it's like such a cool story so we're gonna, gonna go way back okay we're going back it's gonna back make sense time. it's all gonna come gonna full circle sense. yeah because we're close to the same age me and you so, yeah so okay so old millennials makes, old mil- <laughs> I think I, it depends on what, where you ask or who you, I, I think I'm a millennial, but maybe not because it depends on the data. Cause sometimes they say if you're born, but you know, with by 1980, yeah. then you're a millennial, but then some say, no, it's 83. I so I'm like, on the cusp. I know we're going to say it's 80. <laughs> if you were born, uh, um, then you're still a millennial. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I am. Um, I went a different route than most people. I didn't go the college route and that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's what we were talking about. Um, out of this accelerator program here in Techstars. Um, there are 27, it's 10 companies, but there's 27 co-founders amongst those 10 companies. And they warned me a couple of weeks prior to coming out and said, Christine, we have to tell you you're the only female. And like, you know, that wasn't surprising. I'm like, okay, it's fine, it's fine. Then what was surprising was once I was in this program for a month, I overheard people talking about, you know, that they had their PhD, that they had their masters in, you know, computer science or business. And I heard that so many times within my cohort that I finally stood up in front of the entire class and I was like, Okay, so is there anybody else that did not go to college <laughs> in the, out of the 27 of you? And nobody raised their hand. Wow. And I was like, whoa. So, uh, I mean, pretty cool. You know, it's, I like being kind of odd man out. It doesn't scare me. It makes me want to work even harder yeah. um, to prove myself. So, so that was kind of unique. But, yeah, right out of high school, I got my real estate license. I did property management for six years, which is so funny because now, you know, 15 years later, I'm in real oh, estate. right. So it's in like full circle way. in property management. Yeah. Co-living is definitely property management yeah um in a different way and yeah so I've owned I've had um eight exits already so eight built and sold eight companies in the last 15 years which is like insane like looking back um but no kindred you know I have kindred quarters which is the actual brick and mortar co-living concept in Los Angeles and then I have um kindred uh, dot io which is the software platform because it was like here's this new exciting industry co-living which i mean you're always on the forefront of anything that has to do with remote work digital nomads co-working here's co-living coming up is it going to be a fad is it not you know that was the di- that was last year's discussions i think right. now this year everybody knows like oh my gosh this not is if, like but when it, yeah it's definitely yeah. not a fad for sure there's too much money being ejected into it and now they're actually going to consider it a actual asset class oh, when nice. it comes to investment like that's right around the corner so I've already heard whispers of that here in Europe. Makes so it's sense. like it does yeah. for investors. It is going to be an asset class, just like student accommodations. So um, it's an exciting time. So yeah, we st- we built the software platform starting in August. Got into text our MVP launched in December. We got into TechStars the same time. So December was a big month for us, and then here we are. But it's just how do we how do we take this new industry and really add technology to it to simplify you know make it more efficient to actually start tracking data Mm -hmm. like we have no you know investors are even asking us well hey how many co-living how many beds are are globally available right now for co-living I have no clue just like desks how many digital nomads are there in the world nobody knows oh people are asking me that yeah (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) everyone's what like everyone's doing their own independent studies on it but yeah there's no like we're still in such an early phase of like nomadism and co-living and co-working that yeah there's just not yeah. that you're like making it as you go exactly like what is the industry report on co-living co-working has them now because they're a decade in yeah so that's exciting to see those those stats and those numbers because they have them now but we don't have a history to, to base yeah. off of yet so yeah that that's my journey that's so true. far so i want to highlight a few things because um you didn't go to college you didn't go to undergrad no so you went just from high school into working Mm -hmm. and yeah you didn't have like like there's there's not a linear trajectory that you have to follow that I want people to pick up on this like you don't have to do a then b then c then d in order to become a digital nomad or remote worker or entrepreneur or have your own business like you can make quantum leaps or shifts or parallel changes in in your career. So you went from real estate, and then you had didn't you have um, like a cleaning services company? That was my first, yeah. Yeah, that was my first company. Yeah. So I have like this vivid memory of you talking about it in Vegas. So I mean, how did you get from like you went from real estate into that? Fast forward, 
you got to tell us about Richard Branson as well. I want to touch on that. And then now to get to um, being one of, one of 10 companies selected out of thir 300 startups to come to Amsterdam and and work with Techstars, which is one of the biggest um, accelerator, accelerator programs, programs yeah. in the world. And you'll be then presenting your business idea in front of 400 investors in a couple of months. I mean, that's so many different things. So I want people to see how you don't have to follow one career path. You don't have to have permission from anyone to do something specific. Um, yeah, you can go from real estate to cleaning services to having a software company and meeting Richard Branson and like anything in between. So uh, yeah, let's just like back up for a minute. And I really want to hear again, like how you decided to start a cleaning services company like out of nowhere <laughs> and how was that for you like what I happened? know because everybody watching you guys like I want to motivate you and inspire you and not make it sound like some charmed life like yeah. who is this girl she didn't go to college and she gets to meet Richard Branson and she gets to start a technology company like thank you thank you for taking me to my roots so <laughs> 2003 yeah I had no money to start a business I had $45,000 worth of credit card debt racked up because I was just very um, irresponsible in my early 20s, you know, and just uh, like use credit cards to buy everything. And so I was 23 years old and I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to start? I want to start a company, but like I have no money and I have all this debt and I couldn't get a business loan. And I'm like, great, I'm going to have to do it the hard way. So I started a cleaning company, $300. I think I had like $300 left on one credit card I could charge to buy vacuum cleaners and stuff. <laughs> and then I hired these two women and they only spoke Spanish and I only spoke English and made it work. Like I was this crazy crazy 23 year old that was like I'm just gonna make this work and then I bartended at night because I had to pay that debt off because so like oh, how yeah. am I gonna so I would literally clean clean condos in downtown San Diego all day every day with these poor women that had to teach me how to clean because I didn't because again I had that real estate background I had my real estate license but I just really wanted to do my own thing like I just it was hard working in a corporate atmosphere and yeah, so, I mean, it took me a few years to pay off all that debt and, it, and you know, I, I expanded that company. That company was the largest in San Diego after five or six years um, and then sold it for six figures. And it was like, I wasn't even 30 yet. I think it was 29. And so, yeah, so there, I want to, uh, it was a lot of hard work. So I never, ever want to discount like, yeah, you can skip college. It doesn't have to be this linear, like go to college, get good grades. Da, 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 da. You can do a different path, but sometimes that other path is going to be harder, yeah. but more fulfilling. Right. Like, because I will never, ever forget that. Like, it was so, like, it just keeps me humble where I'm like, wow, like, I just wanted to work my ass off because just success is so much sweeter when you, yeah, when you when get you it When you work way. for it. Yeah. So, yeah. so for sure. Um, I have a lot of books, you guys. I read a lot and I've been to a lot of conferences and I study a lot and I, YouTube can be your best friend if there's any concept, especially in technology. Yeah. Because half these terms, I'm like, oh my God, I don't even know what that means. And I'm like in the bathroom on my smartphone, like Googling something. Cause I'm like, oh shit. Like, what does that even mean? And like, don't be afraid. Like no, if you don't know something, just make the effort to learn it. Yes. And I think like even in 2003, there weren't, there wasn't so much like, I don't know if YouTube was even around no, yet. No, not yet. No, 2006, I think. Because I also started um, in real estate. <laughs> I don't know if you knew this. No, I didn't. My first job out of college was in real estate and I, it was in Costa Rica though. So I was living in the jungle in 2005 with like 128 KB internet and no internet <laughs> at my house, only satellite internet at the office. And I remember when like Skype was like a thing at the beginning and we were like, oh my God, we can like, cause but we it were was using all choppy, though. It was over <laughs> IP phones yeah. and like I, that was my career for seven years and it was such a big jump recently. Um, well, it was that for seven years and then my, my relocation company for seven years. And then that's when I started teaching myself other aspects of online business and that's how I got to what I'm doing right now. But I'm still teaching myself as I go and I still have to remind myself that if there's anything you don't know, like you can just look it up and whether it's personal stuff or professional and like actually just now, like I was plugging in the, um, the microphone and I had like my Safari open <laughs> yesterday. I was looking at, cause I just bought a DJ set, um, like to mix music and I don't know how to do it. Well, I've taken like a couple of classes and I just pulled up YouTube videos. I'm like, beginner. I love <laughs> that. That's always like my retirement plan. I'm going to be a DJ. <laughs> Back to back. Let's do it. Okay. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> yes, okay. Like packed. Yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, but like anything that you don't know how to do, like you're gonna be a beginner at first, but then yeah, I mean I'm sure when you were working in real estate, 
and had like three hundred dollars left on your credit line, you weren't expecting to like a few years later be living in Amsterdam in this like tech accelerator program. So yeah, how did so you sold your business? Yes. Um, yeah. And then went on to start a few other businesses. And I also like how you did that overlapping with like things that you were interested in and passionate about. Like maybe you weren't passionate about cleaning. You just saw like a business opportunity, but now once you had more flexibility and more funding and resources and connections, you were able to start inching a little bit more towards into things you were interested in, um, like co-living that leads you to where you are today. So yeah, how did Richard Branson fall into place between and then I feel, and now? I feel like I've told this story so many times. I'm like, I hope you aren't <laughs> sick of hearing this story, but I'll tell it one more time. I'll, Probably I'll my summarize. audience hasn't heard okay, it Okay, I'll summarize it so it's not like the long version. But um, you're, but I loved what you just said is, you, you know, maybe cleaning wasn't sexy. And that's what's so funny too is like in hindsight, I'm like, I think the unsexy businesses are almost better because there's less competition. It's easier to excel in them. Yeah. Because like now in this day and age, it's like so cool to own a tech company, like supposedly, you know, and it's just like so many people are in it it's so chaotic I'm like oh I miss those little days when everybody made I mean literally my colleagues were making fun of me like oh my god you own a cleaning company like why like gross like that's yeah. what they were saying to my uh, face honestly some of the like richest people I've ever met one of them owned an insulation company okay. that was like insulation for like that's used in theme parks that goes on water slides and like fiberglass and stuff and some of the other ones like I was just at um at Tomorrowland Winter, and like all of the people I was sharing an apartment with were in this like rustic little wooden, like crappy apartment, and all of the guys who were there all owned their own businesses, and they were in like trucking, like transportation. Um, I don't even remember. They were like not memorable businesses, but they were all like mega successful. One of them was in like CBD products, and it's like you can have a business that is under the radar yeah. but then you can have a really cool personal life where you're like flying to the french alps to go to a music festival or whatever like it doesn't have to be something like so much in the limelight it no. can be <laughs> it doesn't have to be sexy normal, everybody. yeah <laughs> everybody wants a sexy business and they want to be on instagram like you don't even need a social media account for those like no you you're exactly right think. <laughs> yeah or waste management i know some people yeah. waste management that are just like killing it but who would ever want to say they're in t they deal with trash yeah. like no so it's like it doesn't even matter these yeah days. it yeah. doesn't so um but you're right that was like a stepping stone to then be a little more picky and cheesy about like my next passion or the next i don't base my businesses on personal passion I just usually it's based on a personal need in the marketplace like a pain point I see where I'm like why isn't there a cleaning company that's like on time efficient like yeah. da -da -da, speaks English this and that and then like the next company why isn't there you know why isn't there this or my last one was a wellness spa so um, eco chateau so I started in 2012 and then um, sold in 2017. So uh, I was like, why is there not like a wellness spa that is more like French based versus Asian based in the States and does colon hydrotherapy is more a clinical service done mm -hmm. in a clinical setting, but why couldn't it be done in a spa setting? Um, so just, sometimes I get these crazy ideas and then I do them. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. And then I go all in, all in, you know, on that idea. Um, and then that is what led, so like my team at the spa had known I was gonna cut, like in the beginning of that company, I cut a check. Richard Branson was speaking in San Diego. I ran up, I gave him a check to his charity, not even like a big check, but like all we could afford just uh -huh. to donate to Virgin Unite. That's like my favorite charity because he fronts all the operating expenses. So all the, everything you oh, invest goes, goes straight to the cause hundred percent, which is really rare. If you guys know yeah. the charity world, like some of it's like kind of scam administration and salary, yeah, a million, payroll expenses. Yeah, a million dollars salary for yeah. it's like really? Like it's, why is it costing a million dollars for the CEO to run this, this or whatever? Yeah. So that could be a whole nother podcast, but um, yeah. so, uh, small check, gave it to him. Long story short, he called my cell phone like right after I gave him that check and thanked me. And that like stuck with me. I'm like, how freaking rad. Like, I didn't even, he didn't have to call me and thank me for that little check. So then like a couple years later, again, like you want your passion to fuel you, but you want like a big, big purpose. Like I just kind of like gamifying business. I don't know why. <laughs> I think because I've been doing it now for 15 years. So now I'm like, oh, let's gamify this. Like I'm going to add two zeros to that check. 
and I'm going to give them. That next check's going to be big. And I told my whole staff, 30 employees, we had two locations in San Diego, and then we framed this check. Actually, I still have it on my cell phone. I came across it. Oh. The check was framed, and it was written to Virgin Unite for that huge amount. Wow. And it was framed in both our break rooms and in my bedroom and on my desk at my office. And so that I could see it every day in my yes, face. That's that so I'm like, important. Yeah, so I'm like big at kind of like future pacing or like just keeping it top of mind. Top of mind every yeah. day. Like you really wrote it. Like it was a freaking actual business check with my signature, with the, I mean, it was a real check. I could have ripped it out of the frame and like handed it to him. And so that was there for like a year at least. And then, and then we sold. And once we sold the bit, and I knew like it would take me probably building and selling that company to write that kind of a check. Yeah. And yeah, I think my staff, I don't know if they believed me or not that I was going to do it, but I did it. And then um, um, Richard invited me to Paris to have breakfast because I wanted to give him the check. He's like, so we had a one on one breakfast. He's an amazing human being. Like we had such a fun conversation. And um, and gave him that check, and I had we did a cute video for my team. Oh, cause, cool. Because because again, I, I hate that I get so much credit for my companies when I'm just the crazy <laughs> one that thinks of the idea, and I have these amazing people like in every company that yeah. that do the work and and believe. Some of them believe in it more than I do. It's crazy. They're just like. They just believe in what we're doing in our mission, like especially health and wellness in San Diego. We were really helping people, people with cancer, like um, clients. Just uh, like I got thanked for that business every single day. That's awesome. Yeah. So, but so it's that also was it. a, a big accomplishment to be able to build a team, and like I know how hard that is. Like, it's hard to manage people or inspire people and to um, coach employees but you know without being overbearing and keeping people united towards one common goal so that I think you should pat yourself on the back for that also because that's a really important learned entrepreneurial skill oh well thanks, so. thanks. Well, I, had, I always have an amazing team yeah. so I'm lucky in that sense and then so recently Christine published her first book yes or, called yeah called, second actually yeah. oh second book yeah called The Co-Living Code, and um, that was inspired by her work in the co-living industry space, so early adopter to that. Um, so talk a little bit about the house that you started in LA, and um, what is what is that what is that serving in the market? Like, what need is that serving, and what are the kinds of people that live there? Because if you guys have watched this channel before, you know that I am like, a huge supporter of co-living and co-working and like community and being a long-term um, expat or digital nomad I've actually made it to here we are in my mid-30s old millennial I've <laughs> never owned furniture and like I have an investment property but I don't like own a normal house that I live in and like pay a mortgage to so I always say that I think that the world is kind of shifting this way where we're sharing cars, we're sharing services, and then soon we're gonna, well, we're already sharing houses. So I think that that's like a really important way to present solutions for remote workers and digital nomads. So yeah, tell us a little bit about Can this house. Can we first just like started. coin the term old millennials? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Can you <laughs> trademark? <laughs> trademark old millennials. This is today's, <laughs> maybe that's like the actual like image for this this uh, YouTube interview. I love it, I love it. I can be an old millennial, that's fine. <laughs> as long as I'm somewhat of a millennial. But I think um, it is an accomplishment to get this far like without having gone the path of like the mainstream American dream, for example. For sure. No, and I'm so glad because um, because I've lived both lives. Like I've owned homes, I've owned a bunch of cars, I've owned mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff, and then I become and I swing the complete opposite way, where I'm a minimalist, like through and through. And yeah. and then this, what's funny, but I've always owned a car because I love to drive, and all my friends know that I'm Me obsessed too. with cars and I'm obsessed with driving. Like I will get in my car and I drove to clear my head. I drove all the way from San Diego to Wyoming, which is <laughs> 1,700 miles in three days. <laughs> and I came back, and my roommates, my housemates, were like, "What Where the hell? You, you just said you went to you wanted to go take a drive to clear your mind or whatever." And I'm like, "Well, it just happened to take like <laughs> 1,700 miles." So uh, were I, you in a better mood when you got I back? Totally. <laughs> No, and it did, and I do my best thinking on the road. So, but I did just sell my last car. Like this is the first time in my life moving to Amsterdam that I don't I don't even own a vehicle anymore, because I see the freedom that my you know my housemates have had by not having a car, yeah. even in Los Angeles. 
So, so yeah, I started co-living with other people in San Diego, and that's when I still owned my spa. And I'd said, hey, guys, I love this concept. I want to start my own down the road. Right now I own my spa, so I can't do both. So I co-lived with these amazing guys, and it was the Entrepreneur House, the original Entrepreneur House in San Diego. Oh, no way. Yeah, and so um, we I was there for a couple years before starting Kendrick Quarters. These five guys actually uh, each owned their own companies. And we all lived together in the Entrepreneurial House. We had masterminds, you know, every Monday night for two hours where we dive into each other's businesses and help each other. Like it was a legit like way of living, but we didn't even call it co-living. I don't think co-living was a word quite, quite yet. They weren't, we weren't calling it co-living. And then once I sold my spa in November, 2017, launched Kindred Quarters. So we got a house right up the hill. So we were right, right down the street. So the first house was in San Diego actually. And then we opened up Los Angeles. Okay. So like SoCal, like just, entre- and it was strictly, it's strictly entrepreneurs. Um, anywhere from around the world, um, any given time, there could be 50% of the housemates. Like in the LA house, the first bunch, 50% were from out of the country. Wow. There was two from America, and then three that were from yeah you know, Canada, Hong Kong, Vietnam. So it's just then you start you tie in that you know the digital nomads and remote workers um, living alongside of all other cultures. Like it's really cool. It's like a modern day. Well, I say modern day, like because I did it so long ago, but like a like a exchange program in a way. Kind of right. Like our own exchange <laughs> program, self funded, self directed. Yes. So instead of going to different schools and living with families, we're just like living with other people, like adults who are doing random things and random businesses and just sharing and living expenses. So yeah, tell um, tell us about what you think are some of the benefits of living in a house like this like financial benefits time benefits and then also the intangible like connections that you can have with people yes i call it like the three c's and it's in this order typically it's cost so a lot of these people want to live in like great amazing cities around the world um amsterdam probably being one of them you know obviously you know la san francisco new york um so cost is the first c so they're like the three c's cost um community so just being Mm -hmm. plugged into a city you don't know anybody but if you're moving in with like-minded people you're going to meet their friends and their friends and build it's like an immediate network work of friends, yeah. uh, cost community, and then convenience. So paying one fee and not having to put utilities in your name and not having to buy furniture, you know, not. Yeah. So it's this convenience factor. And co-living really encompasses all three of those really well. And that's and then I just became so passionate about co-living. So not even so much kinder quarters as much. Um, it was like, oh my gosh, this co-living movement is really something that yeah. can be amazing for the whole world. And then wrote the book last summer on it. Yeah. And it was funny because I think you had read my blog like right before we met. Yes. It's really interesting. Like somebody read one of my blogs the other day and was like, I didn't realize this was you. And we met at a co-working space in Bulgaria. So it was kind of funny. But yeah, because you nailed your medium post. Like, uh, yeah, I'd like stumbled upon it and you just nailed like all just what the essence of what co-living is. And when I met you, I was like, you are like embodying what I was saying in the article because we, were, we even both were saying that we feel like this is like a way to disrupt housing in general. Like oh, housing without. moving forward is not going to be what it was, what it has been for the past maybe 50 or 100 years. It's gonna be more about like the sharing economy and like, I don't wanna say like the gig economy, but yeah, basically like the sharing economy and just making things more cost effective because people are priced out of housing in their own hometowns, especially in places like California. And people are more disconnected than ever because of technology and all of these other reasons. So it's a way to like kind of address a lot of different issues that people are struggling with today all at one time. And it doesn't mean that you have to like always live in a co-living house forever, but it's a really good way, even if you wanna do it intermittently throughout the year, to be able to live more affordably without having to put so many utilities and things in your name and then having um, access to be able to meet other people who are different from you but maybe share things in common and like expand your personal network and your business network and then also all these other like benefits like having masterminds um, skill sharing having um, inviting guests over to come and speak about Mm -hmm. different topics like entrepreneurs in the community and then also Things like having uh, laundry services available or having 
dinners or like meal prep or like all this other stuff that just like makes life so much easier so yeah and it's just that like plug and play model of like okay we know when we go there this is what we're going to expect um, and then that's why you know it's exciting to build kindred the platform um, for co-living because then it's all these things that we think of like oh what else do we need like a yeah. tagging like we have a very deep tagging system on the platform because we want people to just click a button that says fitness or health and wellness and then it lists all the co-living concepts around the world that, that that are tagged by, you know, that fitness is their big thing. So maybe you need to lose some weight and it's like you go and live there for three months and you're surrounded by healthy people eating healthy food and working out, you know, and then you hit the tag, you know, now I'm going to live somewhere else. You know, I'm going to go back to North America. What kind of home do I want to live in? Yeah. And you, you push a tag where it's like people writing a book or people, you know, entrepreneurial. Like, so we see, because there always is typically a common like theme or thread in a co-living yes. concept. So it doesn't have to be entrepreneurs. Um, but yeah, if there's that common theme, yeah, yoga, like there's a lot of concepts that are using um, yoga as their their theme or Burning Man, the principles. So there's a few that are really cool that are using wow. the same principles of Burning Man for their for co-living concept. For their co-living spaces. Yeah. That's so, so I think that's the future of living and housing and it's not a 30 year mortgage. Like I will say that publicly, yeah. I've said it publicly multiple times. <laughs> Even my, I have some friends that own some of the biggest mortgage companies in the world. And I'm like, if you don't change your model, right. like fractional, I see fractional ownership um, becoming something in the next like one to two years. Um, you know, I think that people would be more inclined to pay so that they have ownership, but maybe that ownership is flexible. Yes. Almost like a timeshare. Like we're talking about yeah. French. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. It sounds weird, but it's like a hybrid of like a timeshare or like fractional ownership, you know, so then they're still making a payment, but and it's, they're paying towards where, the, what they're, where they're living, but it could be anywhere in the world. Yeah. Without locking themselves in. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, oh, there's so much to unpack there. Like, well, first with the, um, the different co-living spaces and their own like personalities i think yeah like a house like kindred quarters in la or san diego is going to have its own like vibe and kind of attract certain type of people and then also you can get like a totally different experience somewhere else and we we're also talking about at brunch like the different places like um i just saw if you guys saw the episode on being like a citizen of the world with vlad glebov i think it was Episode six of that. Oh, I, w I watched that Did you one. See that one. I loved it. So he has a company called Co Life, and um, I'm actually applying to stay there later in the year. Maybe you want to come for cool. like a month no, or so. And it says on the website like what it is, what it is, and what it is not. And it does address certain things like about partying and stuff because there's definitely some remote work or like remote travel programs that are kind of more centered around networking, socializing, um, maybe partying or drinking or whatever and going out and then there's also other places that are like more like a hotel and then there's places like Selena for example that has it's like a co-living um, concept with offices or with um, locations all around the world and like every location if it's on the beach in Costa Rica it's going to have more of like a hostel backpacker vibe versus like the one in Mexico City or Medellin yeah. or something like that so yeah it's, it's like ordering off of a menu of like where do I want to live and we were also saying how we use locations to focus on certain things like you came here to focus on this tech company I went to the mountains of Bulgaria for three months to write my book and like isolate myself and yeah you can use it to your advantage depending on if you're feeling like more outgoing and social or if you feel like you need to get in shape or whatever it is that you want to do so yeah like, and then you're just it's cool. almost like lifestyle design which I use that word a lot yeah. too because you're designing your life like as you go right and just by picking because usually it is the city somebody usually picks a city first right um, but but then that said maybe Maybe like yeah they pick what they're work where they're at in that stage of life maybe that's how they're yeah. picking that city um i know i keep saying well, i said i was like the big joke is like this accelerator's in the coolest city in the world and it's like torture because i've been working she's like <laughs> yeah. what have you done in the last month here in amsterdam like what and i'm like i have not even gone out right <laughs> i've literally been on my laptop You're in a work, work. Sprint. i'm in a work sprint without a doubt and asleep like if i'm not working i'm sleeping and then that's it but, <laughs> that yeah. doesn't sound so bad <laughs> <laughs> work sprint <laughs> sleep um but but no you're right so what stage are you in where do you want to live like how do we you know and then review peer base and uh, you know just we showed the alumni of you know of the homes like or you could follow somebody on kindred and see the which how homes have they stayed at and then you can reach out and can say hey Kristen you stayed there like what did you think 
So just like what it's such like a disjointed because it's so new, it's super like disjointed industry right now. Yeah. Like there's no nothing that's the kind of tying it all together to make it make sense. And that's what we're working really hard to do. Me, and my co-founders. So I have two brilliant co-founders. So they're they're the techies that make the magic happen. Um, I'm just the one coming up with these ideas again where I'm like, okay, we really need this. Like Yeah, you like I I'm like that too, like conceptual idea based and then I'm like, um, I need a programmer <laughs> or like seven of them. <laughs> Yeah, like, can the, can you make a code that translates to do this, please? <laughs> like, and they're like, no. okay. Well, no, usually yeah. they can. Yeah. But they're like, okay, like, what's the logic? What's this? What are the use cases of it? Blah, blah, blah. So that's that's what we do. That's I the hope, fun part. I hope I get to work with one of your guys. I know. I was right? just talking about a project I was doing, and the developer was like, um, this is too hard. I'm going to not do this anymore. And I was like, all right, I have to find someone else. But yeah. It's part of it. It's part of the entrepreneurial journey, and you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. But so for, um, we'll also link to Kindred at the end. But like, just to like recap again, if you if you are looking for a place to live, you can use the Kindred um, app and platform, or it could also be used for management of co living spaces. So if you are searching for a space, or if you run a co living space, like there's different applications mm -hmm. for. For this, so that yeah, is for the operator, because that yeah. was the biggest pain in running mine. Yes. Was I was using eleven applications. Like, I was using Slack, Trello, yes. Google Calendar, Airbnb for bookings, like eleven. It was ridiculous. I was like, okay, this is not Google scalable. Apps, like, Google yeah. Apps, like let's just. Okay. Why can't there be one piece of software? Yeah. Um, kind of like the Mind Body Online does for spas and salons, yep. and that's the software I used to use. I'm like, we need to be the Mind Body of like the co living industry. And it's like so all needed. the payments, yeah, the billings, reservations. Um, so that's what we're doing. And that's the main thing is that the operator gets to use it to manage everything. So, um, so yeah, it's been fun. I mean, yeah, I never ever, in hindsight, so people were like, oh, was that your plan all along? And I'm like, you guys are gonna be way too much credit. <laughs> no, it was not my plan. And honestly, at first I did not want to do this technology company because I already had a company. I'm like, okay, but I was waiting for somebody else to build a software application for this industry and it wasn't happening. And I was like, and I wrote the book and like nobody had answers, everybody needed software. And I'm like, okay, like, I guess we're gonna do this. I've heard of some founders, and I think I read this maybe in Tools of Titans, because there's so many interviews in there by Tim Ferriss's book, yeah. and I think I read a few people who have ideas, and they try to like <laughs> shop it out, like, can somebody make this idea? And if it keeps coming back to them, they're like, okay, I should do this. And I think that's... The need. Well, you see the need. No, you're yeah. exactly. I think I've read that. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Yeah. If anybody ever needs a business idea, you guys just, Come ping, to just us. ping me. <laughs> like, I have a whole, like, I'm really good about, like, filing them away. Like, when yep. I'm on one, I'm like, okay, file, file, file. Like, not, yeah. I'm not big on, like, bright, shiny objects. Like, I don't get, like, I get very, like, compulsive about what I'm working on. One so, thing. compulsive and is, like, can be a really good thing. Like The one like, thing. The one thing. And yeah. I'm on it. And I'm like, this has nothing to do with the co-living software like putting yeah. a step file. aside to but the left, like to you the guys left. can have my business ideas I have so many of them but yeah. uh yeah I'm done I'm retiring after I already I put on Instagram recently people saw and I think they think I'm joking I'm done I like, was like you are serious no I was like are you serious <laughs> <laughs> no and I mean I'll be involved in business in some aspect some way like probably as an investor run my own fund or, or all like you know participate or help incubators or accelerator programs like I want to help others be the athlete on that so be this is your last founder. startup. This is my venture. personal, like you guys here, yeah. like it's on you. I'm putting it everywhere so people really believe me. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had 15 years of like an amazing, fun, like incredible, like career path. But yeah. I think, yeah, I think I'll be on the sidelines being the coach to like cheer the other, you know, the, the founder on the field, like yeah. cheer them on, <laughs> support them, give them money. I don't know. Well, um, the path yeah. like unfolds, you know, you only have to know your current step maybe the next step but usually only the step that you're on right now like you don't have to see everything ahead of you and I, and I think that this is a testament to that like you can be on all these different tracks but if you have like a one track mind on each thing and you follow each one until it's successful or until it's time to shut it down or whatever and then move on to the next thing you can be like a multi passionate multi talented um, business person that you don't have to have one single identity and you don't have to know what you're going to do next necessarily so yeah. that's really encouraging that you can do so many different things in just a you know a decade or so but 
you're focusing 100% on each one yes. as you go along before getting too spread out was like my biggest problem in life. No, and I love that. I love that you said that for everybody. Again, like I, you know, so Kristen, before we were rolling, I'm like, I just want to provide value to you guys that are listening and watching <laughs> is that like that is the thing I've seen in these 15 years of being an entrepreneur. And I know that word is so played out. I hate even using it. But I mean, is that like, I just want you guys to just stick like one thing and just go so hard on it and go so all in on it that's where you see the success and the magic yeah. but you do it day in and day out and day in and day out and you do it for five so everyone so just so you know like it's usually a five year like and most people know that about me it's funny even them getting into this program that was their first question like christine like you you jump from one thing to the next but i'm like yeah but it's five years yeah. and it's five super like it's probably 20 years compacted in five that yeah. we're pushing so hard and it's everything i've got so like i'm in it for those five years i'm in it really hard and i'm not distracted but that's it you're only gonna get five years out of me <laughs> I've noticed my trajectory is like seven years like it okay. was like seven that's years good. in real estate seven years in in uh, poker refugees and then now I'm moving into like this new whatever this is <laughs> digital nomads like how media this, no but let's talk about that because we yeah. were talking about I'm like I'm like stop we need the content fresh for the cameras because we started oh, yeah. diving into like yeah again how we see remote work um, how it's literally going to shift the world. It already is. Yeah. Because people can work from anywhere now. We really, like, you are the only one that I've talked about this with to date and now the internet. <laughs> but, um, I, like, I think it just comes from being so immersed in, like, what's happening and how this industry is being innovated by our peers and friends and colleagues every day. But I really see it, like, and I know you agree, like we see this whole movement like hitting a critical mass in the very near future like in the next couple years where if a certain amount of people especially i mean right now digital nomads it can be of any age and there's like a big portion of them that are over age 36 like 40 percent i think but once um the younger millennials and gen z move in and shift from like the old economic model to this new sharing economy and also like complete change in consumerism we were thinking like is this going to completely um like destroy the global economy as we know it now i mean if everyone's living like us like if everybody's nomadic or not everybody but like millions and millions of people if millions of people are co-living and they're not buying houses if they're car sharing and not buying cars if they're living out of a suitcase and not buying clothes and if they're spending all of their money on travel and like food and transportation versus um, using spending and consumption as a form of entertainment, then it's gonna completely shift the whole like economic model of how things are today. I mean, we basically, when we're living in a fixed place, we spend money on a certain like basic set of needs, but when you go nomadic and you're traveling and working at the same time, it's like, your um, what do they call it like the basic purse or whatever like your spending habits will completely shift so we're like living in this weird middle zone between tourism and a traditional lifestyle where we have like our our budgets are completely unique compared to what they are when we're living in a fixed location for like one year or five years or ten years so yeah how do you see how do you see things changing in that way and like how is this going to how do you see this kind of unfolding in the next like five to ten years and then so some because i'm such like i love like seeing the future like i geek out on like you know seeing out into the future but then i still look kind of like close like the history the the recent history because i'm like well what's making it shift and then i like backtrack yeah and then it's like like bali like you got and i had this conversation so a friend of mine he's in sri lanka and he said sri lanka is becoming like the next bali soon again because of instagram so yeah, because I because that. i never knew about bali until i kept seeing these like beautiful pictures you know and so last april i was in bali because yeah i'm like like in, and then when you get there it looks like it, like it was like made for instagram yeah and it was kind of like it wasn't even 
seemed very authentic. Surreal, yeah. But it was surreal and it was like branding, like such gorgeous branding, but it looked Americanized. Like it didn't feel like, I don't know what it's was. It's changed a lot in like the past five years. That's what I've heard. Five and I think years. Instagram was like, yeah. so I'm like, okay, is Instagram getting these, you know, now you've got Gen Z that are what, 18 to 24 year olds, mm -hmm. you know, living on Instagram. And then they see these beautiful images of other places in the world. And that maybe that's inspiring them to travel or to live in these other cities. Um, and become these like global residents. Yeah. Um, I think that that might be a factor. Um, yeah, they don't want to own anything. If you ask a Gen Z, like if they would sign a 12 month lease for an apartment, they freak. Yeah. They say, absolutely not. Okay, would you sign six months? No way. Okay, what about three months? Would you commit to three months of living somewhere? Well, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe. Like they'd even pay a premium to have that flexibility. Yeah. Like so, month month. and renting furniture. So all these moving, I keep saying these like moving companies are gonna go out of business yeah. because everybody's renting furniture or they're taking over the person that's moving out, the person's like, oh, just rent it furnished. So nobody's like moving their furniture anymore. Yeah. It's like staying with the house. These houses are coming furnished. It's almost like going from like a fixed asset lifestyle to like a variable asset like Vari no, right variable or share Can we coin that term like, too? yeah a variable <laughs> i know right we need to no you're right and the same with cars like i told you about the car sharing app you know or, or not car sharing but actually uh the leasing for like a month at a time which is the fair app and i think that's brilliant like nobody's gonna do like a five year car lease anymore yeah um uh, ikea just announced recently they're gonna start renting furniture ikea said that and IKEA's furniture is not even that expensive. I know it's almost disposable, <laughs> pretty but. much. But so they're they're seeing the trend. So it's like we just have to really watch closely, you know. And then on the on the remote work side, IBM, like how what percentage of now it's a significant percentage of their workforce they are allowing to work remotely anywhere yeah. in the world. They're giving free. So it's just all this freedoms that now everybody's realizing we need. Um, and then how do you, you know, help facilitate that? And again, co-living, like providing housing that's right. temporary, um, housing, but amazing housing environments, not hotels, because it's very isolated. Yeah. Even for a business traveler, even business travelers I've talked to, they don't like being put up in hotels no. if it's longer than a week. No, but like, how so do you fill sterile. that gap? It's too sterile, but then can we plug them into co-living concepts for a couple weeks? Um, yeah, so yeah, I don't know. plug and play. And I mean, it's like even where you're living now, like you're living at the student hotel, which I actually went over there the other day to check it out. Oh, cool. And it's like downstairs lobby is all like co working areas, and there's like some shared, some private. And, and then there's also rooms you can like live there, but also. Yeah, like studio suites. So it's kind of neat because again, I came from such like I was co living for so many years, and I was in my concept. You know, I have my own bedroom, but it's shared space inside of a house so you share the kitchen yeah. you share you you see your housemates a lot but in student hotel it's more it's co they're calling it co-living in amsterdam amsterdam doesn't have that much co-living yet no so they're kind of converting hotels you know and yeah. calling it co-living which is fine because you do have a lot of interaction downstairs where you were um with with co-working space and lobby and ping pong tables and like yeah but then i still have my own like hotel room almost like studio suite to yeah. myself so then it's a little more isolating, which I won't lie. Like, I get a little break now because I've been yeah. living for so long. Yeah. Like, this is kind of cool. You know, I'm my own place again. Um, yes. That's why I think there there should be a balance because, yeah, you can get, like, burnt out on any one thing. You can get burnt out on working. You can get burnt out yeah. on dieting, working out. And the same goes for co-living. So, yeah, I think when you, when you read articles, like, both Christine and I were, like, kindred spirits yes. no pun intended <laughs> but we both get google alerts on like this a lot of the same stuff and i just read an article the other day on um like these billionaires who basically put their house on the market so that they could go live in a van and like oh rv life God. and travel around and i I'm did like, not see that yeah i'll, oh share, I'll share this story oh with you God, that's awesome like, it's so it's such like a weird thing because you know you you can accumulate so much stuff and then we know like we know that like material things and money don't make us happy but experiences provide more more fulfillment connecting with people provides happiness and all these other like kind of soft things so i think we're at a really cool time where we get to like still be ambitious and whatever we want to do if we want or just get a remote job that's like really easy and doesn't take that much time and allows you to have like more freedom in your lifestyle so everything is always like around freedom but yeah, now we get to also free up our bank accounts with like less monthly payments. So like, even if we keep the same cost of living, we can simplify it. 
So instead of having like all this bill pay every month, it's like we're just paying one flat fee and that includes our room or our apartment and Wi-Fi and you know, everything all this other like stuff. super simplistic and that, yeah. again this is and it's so embarrassing to admit but this is my second time becoming a minimalist I'm like did I not <laughs> learn the first time <laughs> like literally so yeah. I literally have like even a better baseline of comparison of like I've done it twice I've had tons of stuff beautiful yeah. homes cars like all the coolest things you can think of and then I got rid of it all and then had barely anything and I was so happy and content and my life was very you know it's very little stress and I worked on my business and then yep. like then I sold my company and then I got a bunch of stuff again even though I told myself not to do that yeah and then now I just you know when we got into Europe I'm like dude I'm done like I'm selling it all again I'm getting rid of everything I'm gonna go to Europe for these three months and then again it just freed up so much bandwidth so much mental space that I could like focus on my startup again so it's just this roller coaster yeah. where I'm like, when am I gonna learn that it like stuff never and I've learned that you know it doesn't it's it's more experiences it's more c connection that like true happiness comes from that right yeah this stuff is cool but yeah it's kind of overrated to have definitely all fancy cars and all that stuff so yeah i don't know it's but I, I think and again being in europe it's different so i do have to say this to you guys i already told her because <laughs> i just spoke in switzerland and the first question was christine you come from a country that I, well and you're from the u.s too so it's like so we come from this country that's the it's into it, everybody cares about being an individual it's individualism and it's consumption and those are your two core values of the u.s which i didn't know those were our values <laughs> i'm reading from this from the question. outside perspective yeah this is outside because i'm like I'm in the bubble, so I guess I don't know any better. And so I read those questions prior to being going on stage, and I'm like, oh my god, slightly <laughs> pigeonholed there. I don't. And again, no. And every European I've talked to, they laugh. They go, yeah, Christine, duh. They, of course, that's your guys's values. I'm like, oh my god, you guys all think this. Like, uh oh, you know. So it's fine. Times they are a changing. Yeah, but again, I think it's the cities that we've been in. I mean, I think that's the view of the whole U.S. And you know, we're in different. You know, maybe I am in a bubble of people that co-live and share and like yeah. you know I don't know I'm excited there's look I don't know if you could see them on the table but there's crystals I feel like I'm in LA right now I know this could be <laughs> I, I can feel the energy <laughs> it's really nice out here Should no it is it's here. nice but, but we need to go ride our bikes around yes it's we like do one of go the have best some fun to do. well thank you so much for coming and hanging out out here and sharing all of your wisdom and expertise with us and if people want to find out more um, everybody check out Christine's weekly show even though she's super busy she's publishing a weekly show on her YouTube channel which is called the co-living code yeah the co-living code yeah the co-living code show it's on YouTube and it's on iTunes every Wednesday we interview an amazing uh, co-living operator from any anywhere in the world we've 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 had some really great ones on so we've said yeah 40 episodes over awesome. 40 episodes so yeah of course all things co-living I'm super passionate about so you can connect with me on LinkedIn I'm probably on that platform more than any other social okay. media. I'll connect with you too. Okay. I just realized that um, I think I was on one of your first episodes, maybe. Of yes. The code, and I feel I recorded it here at a co a co working space in Amsterdam, like it's last small. year. It all Amsterdam, full circle. full circle in Amsterdam. Yeah. So yes, and it's okay. been filming here. Well, we'll link to that in a card. We'll link to you and your cool. channel and. Um, to check out the Kindred app, go to kindred.io. Yeah, so K-N-D-R-D.io. We took out all the vowels. Okay. You know, like all the cool kids oh, in all California. all the cool tech companies. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, you know, that's the only way you get the domain these days. So. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Follow along with us on this co-living, co-working, remote work, nomadic journey. Um, you can connect with us online. We love to talk and talk about these ideas and just have conversations with people about where you think the future of remote work is going. And as usual, subscribe and like and share and come back for a weekly episode of Badass Digital Nomads here on Digital Nomad TV and more behind the scenes of the Digital Nomad lifestyle travel videos over on Traveling with Kristen. So see you guys next week. Bye. Yay! That was fun. We're close to the same age, me and you. Yeah. So, so okay. So. Old millennials. Old millennials. <laughs> I think I, it depends on what, where you ask or who you. I, I think I'm a millennial, but maybe not because it depends on the data. I love that. <laughs> That's always like my retirement plan. I'm going to be a DJ. <laughs> back to back. Let's do it. Okay. Yes. Let's do it. Yes. Okay. Like packed. Yes. Okay. <laughs>